welcome to the Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a teleporter using trigger boxes. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So the first thing we're going to do is create our trigger box. So you want to go to your C++ classes, right click, create new class show all classes and then you're going to type in trigger box we're going to select the trigger box class click next i'm going to name mine my teleport box and create class so the first thing we're going to do inside our scripts is go to my teleport box.h and we're going to add a couple of includings the first one is going to be game framework actor.h and we need this one so we can determine if an actor within the scene has overlapped with our trigger box. The next one we're going to use is going to be project specific. So for mine it's going to be include teleporter tutorial character.h and essentially what this is is just your project name and then character.h. If you're unsure of what to be looking for for this script, it's over here on the right under your scripts, and you'll just look for the one that has character at the end. And then we need one more include, and this one is also going to be game framework, but this one is going to be spring arm component.h. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and do some of the basics that are normally defaulted in other classes. So the first thing we want is our protected begin play. So virtual void begin play override. And then we want to create our constructor. So this is going to be in public and it's a my teleport box. And now we can create our functions from when we enter and exit our box. So you function void enter teleporter. And then for this, you're going to have two arguments. Both are going to be a actor pointers. The first one is overlapped actor. And the next one is other actor. You can name this function whatever you would like, but it has to be a U function and you have to have these two parameters. Otherwise, when we try to add this function as a dynamic inside of our constructor and our CPP, it won't accept this function as an argument. So now that we've done our enter one, we can go ahead and do the same for our exit. So void exit teleporter. And then the arguments are the same. So class AA actor pointer to overlapped actor and class AA actor pointer to other actor. And now we can go ahead and do our properties. So you property and this first one we're going to make edit anywhere so that way we can see it inside of the details panel and assign a value inside that details panel and we're going to give it a category so we can find it easier in our details panel of teleporter and this is going to be of a my teleport box I'm going to have two teleporters that will be paired so that way when you go through one you teleport into the other and so we need a pointer to that other one and we'll just call it other telly so that way we can get its location and have our player go to that location. And then our final property is going to be a boolean and we're just going to call it teleporting. And we're going to use this boolean to determine if we've just teleported so that way when we teleport into the other teleport box it doesn't teleport us back to the previous box and continue that loop indefinitely. So we can go ahead and save our header, that's everything for that, and go over to our CPP. And the first thing we're going to do inside our CPP is create our constructor. So a my teleport box, a my teleport box. And inside the constructor, I'm going to take the functions that we've created and pair them up with the overlapping actions of our trigger box. So we'll start with begin overlap. So on actor begin overlap. And then we want to add dynamic. In other words, a function. 
we want to add the dynamic to this trigger box. And the function that we want tied to overlapping with the trigger box is a teleport box enter teleporter. And what this line of code is saying is that whenever there's an actor that begins to overlap with this teleport box, then call on the function enter teleporter. So now we'll do the same thing for end overlap. So on actor end overlap, add dynamic. We want to add again to this trigger box. And this time the function is going to be a my teleport box exit teleporter. And this line of code is similar to the above line of code where it checks to see if an actor has ended its overlap with this teleport box. And if it has, then it calls on the exit teleporter function. And then the final line of code for our constructor is going to be teleporting is false by default as we don't begin the game teleporting. Then we can go ahead and create our begin play. So void a my teleport box begin play. And we're not gonna do anything special here. We're just gonna call on it super. And that's all for begin play. So now we can go ahead and start on our enter teleporter function. So void a my teleport box, enter teleporter. And again, the arguments were class a a actor pointer to overlapped actor and class a a actor pointer to other actor. And inside this, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we have an other actor. In other words, an actor has overlapped with us. And we also want to make sure that the other actor does not equal this. This check just allows us to make sure we don't end up with any unexpected null errors. And then we also want to do another check, but this time to make sure that we have assigned the other teleporter. And we're checking this one again for null errors in case we forget to assign the other telly inside of our details panel. And now that we've made sure that there's another teleporter for our player to go to, we can go ahead and see if this other actor that has overlapped with our teleporter is in fact our character. So to do that, we're going to do a teleporter tutorial character where whatever your character controller is named. And then what's going to be a pointer and we'll call it character. And then we want to attempt to cast to a teleporter tutorial character. And what we're going to attempt to cast to this class is other actor. And to further break down this line of code, what we're doing is taking the other actor that is overlapped with our trigger box, seeing if that other actor is also of class a teleporter tutorial character. If it is, then it takes that other actor and assigns it to our pointer that we have called character. And then we check if that cast was successful is simply by doing an if statement with character in it. And this just says it's not null, so the cast was successful. The other actor was in fact of class a teleporter tutorial character. On top of checking that our character isn't null, we also want to make sure that we didn't just teleport from the other teleporter. So the way we do that is by saying not other tele teleporting. And this again is just getting the teleporting boolean from the other teleporter and making sure that it's false. If it's false, that means we didn't just teleport over. If it's true, that means we did just teleport over and so we don't want to move the character. Now that we've determined that the other character is the correct type of character and that we didn't just teleport from the other teleporter, we're gonna go ahead and set teleporting to true as we're about to teleport our character. And then we want to take our character and set the actor's rotation to the other telly's rotation. So that way it's facing forward when it teleports. And then from there, we want to make sure that our camera is actually rotated to the back of our player. So there's no confusion with the orientation of the player after they've teleported. 
And this is a little wonky, but I'll explain it after we type it out. So it's going to be character get controller. And then we want to set the control rotation of our controller to characters get actor rotation. So if you're using Unreal's provided third person character controller, they have it to where the arm rotation, which is what rotates the camera, is set to match the rotation of your controller. And so if you try to just move the arm's rotation or the camera's rotation, it won't properly rotate the camera around the player. So you need to make sure that you're getting the controller's rotation and setting the controller's rotation. And the reason we're setting this to the character's actor rotation is because that the controller is relevant to work view and not the character's view. And so if you were to put just 0, 0, 0, it would just point the camera forward on the x-axis. And we don't want that. We want the camera to be directly behind the player. And since the character's rotation is also relevant to the world, like the controller, you can just get the character's rotation and that will put the camera directly behind the player whenever we teleport. And now that we've set the character's rotation and the camera's rotation, we can go ahead and move the player to the other teleporter. So to do that, you want to do character, set actor location, and this is where we need the other tally, and we need to get its actor location so that way it'll go over to the other teleporter. So we can go ahead and save that, and that's all we're doing for the enter teleporter. So now we can go ahead and do our exit teleporter. So void a my teleport box, and this one is exit teleporter. And again, I'm just going to actually copy paste the argument as it's the same. And the first thing you want to do inside this is the same as with our enter. So we want to make sure first that there is in fact another actor that we've overlapped with and that this other actor is not actually this actor. Once we've made sure that those basic actors are not null, we want to go ahead and make sure that, again, there is another telly. And if it, there is one, that we're not currently teleporting. The reason we're checking for the other telly is so when we do code inside this referencing that other telly, we don't get a null error. And the reason we're checking to make sure that teleporting boolean is false is because if it's true, that means that we're currently in the process of teleporting. And so the exit teleporter will be called when we switch from the one we walked into to the one we're being teleported to. And we don't need any code to happen on the exit of the box that we're teleporting from. We just want something to happen on the exit of the box that we've teleported to, which is what this not teleporting check is for. So if there is another teleporter and we're not currently leaving the teleporter that we're in, then we can go ahead and get the other telly, get its teleporting boolean and set it to false. If we didn't have this, you'd end up being in an indefinite loop where you're teleporting between the two teleporters as you enter and exit them while teleporting and Unreal will crash. So what this allows us to do is say teleport me on enter, but don't take into consideration the exiting of the first teleporter, only take into consideration once I have left the teleporter that I have teleported into. I know that was a lot of use of the word teleporter, so I hope that wasn't too confusing, but I just want to make it clear that we're using this enter and exit, so that way we can prevent an indefinite loop occurring between the two teleporters. This is actually all of the code for this tutorial, so we can go back to the scene and compile. And now that our compile has completed, I'm going to go ahead and drag in our teleport boxes. I'm just going to put one over here and one over here. I've created a really simple model so that way we can see where our teleporter is. And then I'm just going to move these over to where the boxes are. And I'll rotate them so that way we can see that our character is in fact rotating with the box. And 
And then I'll rotate this. And then expand it. And then we want to go into our details and find the other telly and make sure it's the opposite one. And then we want to do the same for our other box. So again, make sure it's the opposite teleporter and then just position it how you would like it. Now I'm going to go ahead and save and play. So now if I play and go through the portal, you can see that it takes me out the other portal and that the camera is directly behind me and that I'm in the direction of the trigger boxes forward. So if I were to hop out back into the scene view and rotate this trigger box and we'll rotate this one just so it's easier to see and I go back through it, it still rotates me with that trigger box. So as a recap, we used two different trigger boxes so that way we could teleport between a pair. We also made it to where our character rotates to be in the forward direction of that trigger box and so our camera is directly behind the player to prevent disorientation whenever teleporting. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We post videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream on Twitch Monday through Wednesday, so if that interests you, be sure to check that out. We also have an app on the Google Play Store called Blast Off, and we have our own asset pack on the Unity store of kids' toys. On top of that, upon request, we've created a Patreon, so if you would like to support us, we've created a support tier for that. If any of those things interest you or you'd like to support us in any of those ways, all of the links for those things will be listed in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.